Hey guys, Mike here. As you all know, 40 OS 7.0 has recently hit GA status. It was released on March 30th, somewhere around there, and people are flocking to it as you would expect. Um, for those of you that don't know, 40 OS has been going through some major betas on their 6.6 .6 code, which was recently rebranded to 7.0, um, so that they could try out a whole bunch of new features some new stability things and just help make life a little bit easier for people that use FortiGates in their environment. Now, it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyways, do not load 7.0 on a production environment unless you've got a lab environment that you've been able to test your deployment on, that way you know for a fact it's not gonna cause any work stoppage for you and your organization, or if you just like to fly by the seat of your pants and live a miserable life of troubleshooting. Now, with that being said, I've been playing with it for about 11 days now. I have it on my home unit as well as my lab unit. And outside of some little quirks, it's been very good. What we're going to do in this video is I'm going to discuss some new features that are coming out. This is just going to be a quick bulleted list. Um, and you can actually see these if you look at the What's New document from within Forta, Fortinet's documentation. But I like to talk about some of these and why I feel that they're going to be major gets for anyone that's using 40 OS 7 in the versions to come. Uh, I stand by my creed of not moving forward with it until it's in at least .4 or .5 of the release. Give us some time to have patching and things like that knocked out. But if you like to live dangerously or you, if you have a lab environment and you want to jump in and start playing with it, here's some of the cool things that I like that has been added to 40 OS 7.0. The first one is something that might not be that big of a grabber for most folks, but I happen to like it. It's the fact that they've added an application bandwidth widget capability within the dashboard. Now, that's a relatively simple item, especially since in 40 OS 6.4, you got a lot of widget opportunity there for your dashboard to see what's going on with your device. I like the application bandwidth usage widget because it gives you the ability to see how much bandwidth specific applications are using on your network. Now, if you're using SD-WAN or you know any kind of like traffic shaping or policy routing to make things use certain links this gives you a really good visibility into you know how much traffic is Skype using how much traffic is YouTube using things like that so you can make educated decisions on where your traffic should go it's a simple thing but it's just one of those solid improvements that Fortinet's added that helps make the software feel a little bit more polished especially when you're comparing it to like Palo Alto's Pan OS the second thing that I find as a really good add is the fact that they've actually increased the monitoring and visibility capabilities of SSL VPN and IPsec VPN. It's now a lot easier to see sessions in FortiView that are tied to specific interfaces that are uh, VPN in nature. So if you have users that are connected via SSL VPN, under the SSL VPN monitor page, you can actually see the user jump straight into the FortiView logs that are relevant to that particular device. And from there, you can do a lot of quick digging around and getting into the, the meat of what's going on whenever you see that traffic. You also get a lot more detail on the IPsec section about uh, the phase twos, traffic, the, the logs that are you know being generated because of that. Anything, anything that helps make FortiView more accessible and useful to the end user, obviously that's gonna be a win in my book. Third thing that I think is interesting, I don't know if it's gonna be a win or a lose yet, um, is the fact that they've they've switched over to a rolling seven day count on policy hit counters. If you're porting configuration over from older devices, the hit counters make a lot of good use for you to know whether or not that policy is actually even necessary or whether it's you know something that makes sense for you to bring over, right? Um, it helps you reduce things and keep it tight and neat. I don't know if a seven day rolling counter is going to be enough for most organizations because we do have items that you know might kick off only once every 30 days or something like that and that policy that doesn't get any hits in that seven day period might be viewed as orphaned or overshadowed and no longer necessary when in reality it is you know actually being used. I do think it's nice that they at least clear it though on some fashion that way you know this policy hasn't been hit in seven days. It's going to force you to rely on a Florida analyzer or something to get more timeline detail about a policy, but I think in most environments it'll actually help you keep your stuff a little bit neater. Another really cool feature that they brought on is passive WAN health monitoring. 
in the past you had to either configure a link check monitor or a link monitor on older versions of code or if you were using SD-WAN capabilities of the device you had to set up SLA and ping monitors. Obviously that is separate configuration that adds to what you have to do in order to actually know if your you know if your WAN interface is working as intended or the destination interface in general not necessarily a WAN interface. What the passive WAN health monitoring does is it gives you the ability to monitor via traffic that's actually traversing a policy. It's a configurable item. You turn it on on the policy, and then from there you get the capability of saying, you know, by the traffic that's going over this policy, is my WAN link healthy? Is it still flowing as intended? Are we seeing the, you know, the SIN, SINAC, ACK, the, the traditional traffic communication flow that you would see when a packet's going out? It's nice because you don't have to deal with a whole bunch of very specific items when configuring your actual uh, health monitors it just your policy is what it is and you set it there um, it's not going to have the configurability of a link monitor and it's a little bit rudimentary but it's easy and it gives most people what they need especially in Soho and medium style setups to actually have the monitoring necessary to know if their WAN link is okay the fifth item that I think is going to be pretty awesome actually is the zero trust network access so they have a really good introduction on their page that actually goes into the nitty-gritty of it but if you do full scale zero trust network access just know this you will have the capability of making internal resources accessible to remote resources without having to use a VPN it's just going to use an SSL encrypted access proxy helps keep things really smooth, helps remove a lot of the things that come with SSL VPN and you know having to configure the end user and do this and do that. So it's a really cool thing that's going to make remote access, especially in a COVID world or in a world where remote resources are just popping up left and right. Most people are working from home these days. So that's really going to give you the flexibility without the cumbersomeness of having to configure and, and deal with SSL VPN, which is nice. If you're in NGFW policy mode, you now have the option to actually configure application control groups. You can not only select an application as a defining factor within the policy, but you can set based on category or risk. You know, if it's a critical risk app and you want to block it, you can do that, you can do that based on the actual risk rating. So if you don't want to go through and find every specific application that you may or may not want to flow and you want to just lock your stuff down based on risk and then whitelist anything that gets busted in the way, you now have that capability. If you have ever used vWire pairs on a FortiGate, you're going to like this one. They finally added the ability to have multiple vWire pairs as part of a policy. Now for those of you that know, whenever you create a vWire pair, and then you went to the actual vWire pair policy section, you had to actually choose which vWire pair you wanted to make policies for. Now that can get a little frustrating, especially if there's a newer engineer in there. And if you have a similar policy for both sides or you wanted to apply the same you know, access control to two vWire pairs, you had to duplicate effort. You can now do this by selecting multiple source and destination interfaces of the actual vWire pairs multiple vWire pairs within the same area, so it's gonna make that a lot easier for you. Another really cool feature that's coming in with 40 OS 7. Your FortiGate can now be an SSL VPN client. I repeat, your FortiGate can be an SSL VPN client. Gone are the days where your FortiGate can only terminate SSL VPN connections from endpoints or be a point-to-point -point for IPsec. Your FortiGate can now participate as a client to other devices using SSL VPN. So if you're in a situation where IPsec just isn't doable for whatever reason and you wanted to do site to site, you now can. That means connecting OpenVPN to SSL VPN via the FortiGate just got a lot easier. And it's something that I quite honestly thought they would have had a long time ago. Better late than never, I guess. A little minor detail that they added is you can now actually log the execution of CLI commands. Um, it's a global system setting that you can do so that whenever you really want to know exactly where things went wrong when someone was scripting or doing something like that now you know it's a little bit of visibility into a big thing especially if you're hand jamming a lot of stuff that you just didn't expect to have to actually log in the past it ends up coming in and being 
fairly useful. A little bit of nostalgia kicks in on this next one. They did actually add a lot more themes. More importantly, they added the old green screen theme from the older 40 OS, uh, which may or may not induce post-traumatic stress syndrome for a lot of you. Either way, I think it's neat. Nostalgic, you know, anything that helps you reminisce and feel better about yourself and how far they've come, maybe it's worth it. Last but not least, they finally brought more functionality with configuring dynamic routing into the GUI. Gone are the days where you have to be a CLI Jedi to be able to actually configure advanced dynamic routing. They brought almost all the heavy hitter items into the GUI so you can do it right there. Um, CLI is perfectly fine for me. I do it all day every day. But it's nice to be able to point and click every now and again. I guess Windows and Mac OS have kind of ruined us in that regard. Nevertheless, more people will be able to configure dynamic routing with ease versus having to stumble along in the CLI and maybe get it right. So those are the big hitters with 40 OS 7.0 that I think are going to be fairly big wins for the end user, you. I'm going to have videos about each one of these items that dive into detail about why I like it, some of the cool things you can do, and uh, we're going to start actually with dynamic routing and the benefits that you get from having those options actually in the GUI now. But if you like the video, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like, comment below. If you hate it, hit thumbs down, comment below, doesn't matter to me. This thing runs kind of, you know, organically on feedback, if you will. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.